And I will just note for you that if you're a little lost right now, if you're on the loading annotations tutorial page, you scroll down to loading 2D annotations, you keep scrolling, you'll see here's a link to the current state. You can just click that link. I'll just click it right now and open it in yet another tab, although we'll see how badly that does to my internet connection. Um, what it's going to do is load exactly what I just did. It's going to have the CTCF, the H3K36 ME3, and it has the domains and peaks loaded. This is just something that I had saved earlier and I made it as a link and you can just click that link and you will be brought right to where I am. And this one is still working, but now it's back. All right, so I'm just going to exit out of that, but just to show you that you can do that. All right. So already you're starting to see some interesting things, possibly, uh, where you're noticing perhaps where things are looking like, well, this is kind of interesting. They've drawn these, these boxes around. Maybe there's some alignment here. Maybe there's some differences in this, in this pattern in the H3K36. Maybe there's something going on with these peaks in the CTCF. So one way to really get a handle on that is you can click the shift button and start moving your mouse. And when you do that, you see this crosshairs appear. And so that's showing you like sort of where are things on the X and Y axis. So here, if I'm here on this point, I go over here, you can see the peak on the X axis. And then if I look, what does it represent on the Y? Well, it looks like there's some CTCF peaks here as well. So these were the kinds of explorations we did in 2014. Well, before 2014, but that were appeared in our 2014 paper, these explorations that we did using Juicebox. And we would note these things qualitatively and then go ahead and verify them quantitatively. And so we, one thing we noticed was that CTCF seemed to be mediating these, uh, these loops, this loop formation, and that also HCK 36ME3 and some other histone marks seem to be decorating these, these domains, these contact domains. And so you can go ahead and keep exploring that in here. Um, we have a lot of data in our paper about it as well. And I have links to the paper at the bottom of that. I saw that there were some things in the chat, so I'm just going to go check that out. Ah, so in the chat, somebody asked, what's the software that produces peaks? Please feel free to just interrupt me and ask. Um, also, but yes, the software that produces the peaks is, uh, is Juicer Tools, it's the hiccups algorithm. And um, as Mohammed says, you can run it separately if you already have a high C file, uh, because it's actually not just, um, we are, it's not just the Juicer pipeline that produces high C files at this point, there's other pipelines that will produce it that maybe do some different pre-processing steps before that. So anytime you have a high C file, you can always run hiccups and hiccups is run automatically um, in Juicer after the high C file is produced. I'll just scroll down to the bottom of this um, loading annotations web and you'll see that uh, we have links to the two papers. So um, feel free to go ahead and browse those in your free time. Um, and we're going to go on to comparing maps. So comparing maps, I find it be very exciting. I think it is really one of the most interesting and exciting features of Juicebox. But I will pause for just a second to make sure that there's no questions before I move on to the next portion. Actually, I have one. Yeah, so, absolutely. Um, I get, I mean, can we also, is it possible to load the tracks, well, like Zen code tracks, like coordinates of the genes? So we do have the genes um, and I can even, load them right now. I'll just load them right now. We're going to load them also in the next section. Okay. Sorry. Um, but, but I can show you how to load them right now because it's a very good question. So the thing is, is that um, obviously ENCODE has some tracks, but they don't have genes. I mean, it would be kind of silly for ENCODE to have genes. Or I don't know, maybe it wouldn't be silly, but whatever. ENCODE doesn't have genes. Um, so we have it under frequently used. Um, and genes are the top ones. We also have our own CTCF orientation track that's from our um, the 2014 paper. The rest of these are, are ones that they exist. I mean, I think that they were probably roadmap and they so they exist on the ENCODE server. So this is a bit of um, 
you know, duplication or something. Um, they're a little bit old at this point. Um, although it's, it's, it's never very clear what you should use, but we use these in the 2014 paper. So that's why we have them as frequently used. We also have a couple down here that are for, um, that are specific to um, uh, a different paper that we did about cohesion loss. But the very top one is genes. So you can just click genes and the genes will appear. I actually don't know what's going to happen on here, what genes are here, but they do appear. Well, that's amazing. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to go ahead and tell you all to go to chromosome 21. So you can decide how you want to go to chromosome 21. Um, any which way, I am going to go ahead and just type 21 to start. And then since we're already talking about genes, um, we might as well talk about one specific gene and we can just type that into the search bar. Now remember there's lots of different ways to go to where you want to go. You can zoom into where you want to go. You can double click on the map. You can use the resolution slider. You can type in the location of where you want to go. One other thing that I haven't shown you yet is you can type in the name of a gene. So in this case, I'm going to type in ADAMTS1. I'm just going to wait like that for a minute so that everybody knows what I'm doing. And then I'm going to click return. It's also in the tutorial, but I just wanted to make sure because otherwise it just changes right away to where that location is. All right. So now we've zoomed into this gene. You can see it's right here. I'm actually going to move it a little over because I want it to be over towards the, towards the, the side for what I'm going to show you. All right. Hopefully everybody's with me. The next thing we're going to do is compare maps. And so I really like this feature of, of Juicebox on the web. It's, it's not nearly as seamless in um, Juicebox desktop to do this sort of thing. Here it's just very lightweight and it's just so nice. I think this is why this has sort of become the favorite of the lab, I think, for exploring maps. So again, we talked about the buttons at the top. We have load map, load bmap, load tracks, session, share, and this plus button. So I want you to click the plus. So if you click the plus button, you should see an empty map appear to the side. Now, if your screen is small, I'll just show you what happens. If your screen is small, it gets bumped down. It was down here. So this happened yesterday to somebody in, in the workshop. You can click the plus button and you think nothing's happened, but possibly what happened is it got bumped to the bottom. But it's there. So here it is. All right, another thing that you might notice is that there's a black line you may not have noticed because it's a little bit subtle. There's a black line around this empty map panel. You can also click back on your GM12878 and you see now the black line is there. This is just to show you what's highlighted. It's like a window that's highlighted. Any thing that you do in these menus is going to go to the map that's highlighted. So make sure that you're not on MB01 GM12878 when you click load map, blah, 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 because it's just going to replace this map. What we actually want to do is be highlighted black line around the empty map panel. Click load map, encode. Now we want to look for a different experiment. We're going to look at IMR90. So type IMR and it's a dash 90. Sometimes I don't have the dash and it doesn't work and then I'm confused. Again, we're going to want to load all of the replicates together, the combined replicate IC map, which is this one, two, bio reps, and then, you know, several different technical replicates. So click that, the ascension number ends in YXX. Click that and click OK. And the map is going to load and it's going to zoom into the exact same place automatically. That happens every time you load a map. You can load many more if you want, and whatever you load will be, once you load it, it will zoom into the same location. So they're all in the same location. All right, so we can already see that these look a little different, but let's try and look at this a little bit more systematically. If you go to norm, click it, make it go again to balanced. So that kind of gets rid of those, kind of smooths over this, these like areas of low coverage, areas of high coverage. Can I ask something, Nava? Yes, please. 
uh, when you load the map, uh, the resolution is the resolution here on the on the uh, kind of on that side bottom where it says one kb, five kb, ten kb. Are those standard? Are all the maps? Um, how is this resolution determined? Does it uh, is it um, depending on the depth of your sequencing? No. So that's a great question. The, we have default settings in, in our software for how we create the maps. We have default settings and we've been at, I think, seven or eight different resolutions from 2.5. It's, it's like this. Um, this is three megabases, but I think it's actually 2.5. One, 500, down to five, usually. We actually don't always go down to one. Um, it depends. For us um, in the lab, I think the defaults don't go down to one, but for these maps, they were deep, and so we went down to one but it's not automatically determined. So even when we have like MySeq experiments with only a million reads or next seeks, um, we still been at all these resolutions. It's just that they're super sparse. So it, I mean, it actually doesn't cost us anything because they're so sparse that we, we just don't save the values when they're not sparse, when they're sparse, there's just no values. It can be an issue with normalization. It can mean that normalization doesn't um, converge because the matrices are extremely ill-behaved and in that case, you would use um, coverage normalization. Coverage normalization, because it, coverage normalization just uses the reciprocal of the sum in order to balance, to try and better balance the matrices. And so um, that, uh, that will always be available to you. Okay. But otherwise, the other thing to note, so if you're coming out from Juicer software, Juicer tool software, your high C maps will essentially always have the same resolutions. But if you make your own, um, you might not be able to compare at the same resolution. So you might have, and that, I mean, that can be a little bit problematic, obviously. Um, That's very important for me. Thank you so much. So make sure that, you know, it's not hard to create high maps. It doesn't take long. Um, and if you only want one resolution, I don't necessarily recommend that, but if you only want one or a handful of resolutions, again, it doesn't take very long. And, no, um, I run all through Juicer, and if they're automatically set up, that's perfect. I, I don't need to... Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. All right, on this IMR90 map, still with the black lines around the IMR90 map, we really do want to load the same tracks again. All right, so now we're going to go load tracks and code. And what I remember from this is that there's like too many IMR90s. So CTCF IMR90, and then we still have like, okay, I guess here it's only 13 entries. Um, I have to go look at my notes for what exact one I, I usually use. Um, okay, I think it's, it's the one I need an IZF, it's the I say, I put in my notes. So I think it's on the second page. Yes, here it is. Again, it's a single p-value track, but you could do this full change over control over one of the replicates instead if you want it, whatever you want. So I click OK. Then I'm going to, again, go to load tracks and code. Now, instead of CTCF, I'm going to load H3K36, I mean, H3K, H3K36, M3. All right, and so for this one, I had AAC, I think, as the end. Yes, so this one, the one from Ming Ren. Again, the, with two um, replicates, signal p-value track. Let me click OK. So the thing is, is that I'm going to change the colors. Um, you don't have to if you don't want to. But I'm just going to go ahead and quickly change the colors. Um, change. So change them to uh, green and orange again. I'm going to quickly change the names. Um, Then I'm going to go ahead and load the, um, the gene track, because we already loaded the gene track here on the um, GM12878. So go to Load Tracks, go to Frequently Used, and then go click down and click Genes. And then it's going to load that. So you can see it's the same track. And already you can see, I mean, hopefully you could have seen this already before, but you know these, the tracks look different. Um, you might have noticed perhaps why I wanted to look at this particular gene. 
Um, and also, you see that the, the heat mass themselves, the chromatin looks pretty different in this locus. All right, so we can actually try to see if there were difference in the calls when we looked at the domains and the loops. So again, we're going to go to encode. So load tracks encode. And again, I am R90. Now this time, I'm not going to have you click OK because I'm going to show you um, a feature. So I am R90 domains. You can click that. Now, if you don't click OK, it's still selected. Behind this, it's like it's like a checkbox with you not needing to see everything, if things that are hidden by the filter. But it's checked. So that is already checked. So then if you do IMR90 loops, oh, sorry, not loops, long <laughs> range, range spelled correctly, chromatin interactions, and there it is. So you can click that. So now you've actually selected both of them, although maybe it's not that obvious. Um, I wonder if we it's always good to in the live setting to just experiment. We click IC. Now, now you can see that these are both selected. Maybe that was the best thing to do in the beginning is just to click IMR90 IC and we would have been able to just bring up both of them quickly. But now so they're we correspond to the uh, biosample assay type, right? Like yep. the thing, the switch, right? Huh? Okay. Yep, you can also sort by that. Yeah. So even if we weren't in here, you could sort by that up and down, but it doesn't help us that much because there's too many. <laughs> I just um, wonder if, if you are loading data from another series, not that it's encoded, does it have the same uh, characteristics? Biosample, uh, assay type, output type? Um, do you mean from stuff that's not on the encode servers? Exactly. It doesn't have that, but you can still load it. Okay. All that, all that juice box, this is just to show you how to explore it because the tutorial is in the encode users group and we're talking about encode data to show you how you can explore the plethora of encode data, which of course is enormous. But um, if you wanted to load your own, any of these formats, big wig, big bed, anything, any thing in any format that is sort of loadable by say UCSC or any of this, you know, the standard genomic formats, you could load it and it'll show up. Um, okay. You would have to load it either as a URL or as a local file. So I'll talk a little bit more about URLs versus local files in just a second. But now you should have had two things selected. I see. You have these two things selected and just click OK. You don't even need to see them. If you don't see them and you click OK, it'll still load them. So we click OK because they're still, they're still there. They're just, you just might not see them. And it loads them both at the same time. So I wasn't showing you that before. Um, so maybe you got a little tired of always going to load tracks and code. You don't always have to do load tracks and code. You can always just click what you want and then search for the next thing, click that, search for the next thing, click that, and then just click OK once and it'll load everything at once. All right. So we see these this interesting pattern. Indeed, these domains are labeled by, um, by Arrowhead. Uh, indeed, there's a totally different seems to be a totally different interaction pattern. Indeed, there seems to be these, like there's this one loop that's the same, but maybe these other ones are not nearly as intense. This one over here, this one doesn't appear at all. This one over here um, exists as well, but these little ones here, this st structure here doesn't appear to exist. And NMTS1 is known to not be active in GM12878 and to be active in IMR90. So what we posited what we think is going on here is that you know this activation has changed the folding of the chromatin um, and this is also mediated by these transcription factors by the by the ctcf and uh, also by the the me3 in the tutorial itself i have you load the R the rna seq tracks and the um and a different one of the other um activation uh marks for the for the gene but um i think you guys have probably have probably been convinced and have probably done a lot of uh, clicking load tracks and code to to see all this. Um, so I'll briefly answer the question about load tracks. The load tracks. Say you want to load something else. Well, let me see. Where are we? We're in comparing maps. Sharing URLs. Oh look, we're already going there. All right. 
All right, let me just, I'll say one more thing before I go into the, the difference between local files and URLs. So the, the, the thing I'll say next, so if you wanted to just see this RNA-seq tracks loaded, which RNA-seq, there's a lot of RNA-seq signal tracks, um, and uh, there's a lot of H3K4 ME3. So for both of these, I really have to just use the encode ascension number, and it's kind of annoying to, to cut and paste over. But you can also just click this link at the bottom, like close to the bottom of this, of this comparing maps tab. There's a tiny URL right here, and I'm going to load it for you guys. We'll see. We'll see how how stable my internet connection is. So you can see it's bringing up exactly what we were just looking at, but now it actually also has these extra tracks. The yeah, RN ID uh, H3K4 ME3 and the RNA seq, and the similar in the GM12878. Um, and you can see that, I mean, it's a little hard to see because of where we are, but if you're just looking at, at this, this Atom TS1, you can see there's a pretty di big difference in these um, activation marks versus in, in Atom, versus in GM12878. Again, this is known. And you can also see, of course, that it's creating, seems to be creating this difference in, in chromatin folding. You can also see the CTCF track here for the IMR90. It's again corresponding to these, to these peaks, which are not here. I mean, there's no peaks and there's no, there's no loops. All right. So one more thing I'm going to show you. I'm actually going to exit out of, well, I don't know what I'll do. I'll exit out of that. There's one other thing you can do, which is load as a control map. So we really prefer, or I mean, I shouldn't necessarily say that, but I think that in this Juicebox web, being able to do side by side is really nice. We really like that. However, sometimes you you don't have this, the screen space for side by side. Sometimes you just want a different way to look at things. And so that's where this load B map comes in. So I'm going to click over again on the MBO1 primary replicate. But now I'm going to click load B map. And the load B map that I'm going to load is the same one that we have over here, the IMR90. So you have load map, and then you have the same possibilities on the B map because it's essentially the same thing, but it's going to load what's called a control map. Now, this is the primary way to compare things when you're in Juicebox Desktop is to load control maps. So we have a lot of features around that in, in Juicebox Desktop because basically because we don't have this um, easy to use side by side view there. So you go to load B map, encode again. IMR90 is already there because that was the last thing we loaded. And so click again this um, IMR90, uh, this YXX ascension, click OK. And it's getting loaded as a B map. So the A map here is GM12878, the B map is the IMR90. And you can have several different ways. The tracks remain the same. So the tracks are still GM12878. If you felt like it, you could load the IMR90 tracks underneath if you wanted to be able to look at the differences directly in one screen. But you can go A and B, you can just use the check mark to have it load the B map. And it'll go to the B map. You can also look at A over B or B over A. You can use this arrow button to just quickly switch between them. Or you can, nice thing you can do is use this little cycle button. The cycle button will just automatically cycle. It's kind of nice if, you know, you want to like take a little GIF or something and then just have it in your presentation so that you don't have to keep clicking back and forth. You can just show people that here's a difference. Here's, here's something that's pretty different and you can see exactly how they're different. So this is just one other way to compare maps. And the other thing that we mentioned is um, if you have this mode on and you share the map, then that mode will stay on and you will, you will still have that. And there's an example of this at the at this um, bottom of this page, the bottom of the comparing maps page. We have a link showing that if you share links generated in the cycling mode, they're going to preserve the switching back and forth between the maps. And so you'll still see that switching. So you can really tell your, you know, 
your collaborator that, look, let me show you exactly what it is. And you don't even have to tell them that they need to click back and forth. You can say, just look at this little video. <laughs>